Hey guys, welcome to the Bavarian Corner. My name is Paul Drum. Uh, these videos are coming up quite late. I recorded them in December. It's May. Life got in the way. Work. Vacation. You name it. Uh, this is just a hobby of mine. And, um, and you get to enjoy it. Uh, let me know what you think about the upcoming uh, videos on the restoration in the comments section below. Otherwise, enjoy and uh, stay tuned for more videos and upcoming reviews I plan on doing in the summertime. Talk to you later. Bye. Welcome back to the second in the the second video in the restoration series for my dad's 325i. I'm back over at the cottage. It is December 27th, the day after Boxing Day, and it is cold outside, but I do have a portable heater, and let's get to it. So as you will see today, I am going to be taking out the front passenger seat, the back seat, the back, uh, the seat backs as well as along with the rear parcel shelf, and all the trim pieces. But first, we're going to start with the. Uh, we're going to start with the pass with the driver's seat, and as you can tell, it was difficult doing it the last time on the passenger side because the bolts were tight. But I, but my hands are warmer, and more importantly, I don't have a bloody finger, so I should have better strength taking things apart. So let's get to it. And more than likely, I will replace these bolts with fresh bolts. <clears throat> when, when I put in the new seats. But these new seats I'm probably not going to replace till the summertime. Now we move this to the front. Ugh. So this exposes the uh, bolts in the back. Now, if you recall, this next part is actually pretty difficult because I have to take this part out of the seat. So this requires me to lift the seat to get access to the bolt that is right below uh, this line right here. Bit of a shortcut, 
this right here is what needs to be removed to get this seat belt loosened and then unplugging these various uh, connectors underneath the seat. And once for the motorized seat that operates this part. And I do plan on replacing these with motor uh, motorized seats with heat. And I will take you through that process once I get to it. So, the, uh, the seat is out, as you can see. It's just tucked right in back there. And this opens up quite a bit more of the inside to work with. But as you can see, it is just nasty in here. Probably the cleanest part of the carpet is right here. But as you can see, carpet's ripped. So this is all gonna be gutted and replaced. And I'm actually gonna bring new wires, new speaker wires to all the to all corners of this car. So you, for speakers, there's a kick panel speaker here and one on the other side. There's a mid and a tweeter that sit right here. And then two six by nines that go in the back corners. But I'll talk about that much, much later. But the next part, let's get the uh, the seat out right here. And this is actually quite easy. As you can see, all it takes, there's a handle here and a handle here. And you just lift and pull back. And that's all there is to it. The back seats are actually quite easy to take out. All you have, well, I lied. There's actually one quick step you have to do beforehand. Oh, it's funny what kind of things you find underneath seats. I just found a pair of scissors. Very odd. Um, so you have to unbolt these uh, two seat belts. So let me just get the bolts for that first. Again, this is a um, 5 8 these and there's this little clip right here which you have to remove so I'm just going to get a flathead screwdriver for that flathead screwdriver you just end up popping This out of place. Right here. So this actually lifts back right here. And I'm gonna just bring you over and give you a closer look at what's back here. So as you can see, this was closed like this. You lift this back. There are these two um, anchors that 
have to be moved back, which will release the seat right here. So. Just put it right here for a second. We have to actually move them back and then lift the seat at the same time. Maybe. I move them back far enough to actually. There. One seat out. As you can see, the uh, seats are very brittle. All the plastic, everything has, as a result of sun exposure in Arizona. These side bolsters over here typically just pop right out, but it requires a little bit of force. But you go from the top, you grip it on the top, and then you work your way to the bottom. Because <clears throat> as you can see, you've got the clips, look, the bracket over here that attaches to the uh, anchor. And there's a, there's a little clip at the bottom that slides right into this anchor point and then you have the bottom piece for this right here. So that's the side bolts. The next part we'll be taking off this bracket or this plastic uh, piece right here. So we'll be taking off this plastic piece, this part right here, and these are all held in by retaining clips. You got one, two, three, four. Same thing on the other side. Once these three parts are released, we should have access to remove the real person shell. So I'm gonna get put you back on the tripod and start at this. As I said in the previous video. These trim removal tools are super, super important for any trim tasks that you want to uh, embark on. So this is how you get pretty much all the interior taken apart. Uh, the headliner, I'm probably going to wait for a different day to remove that. But what I'm going to do first, well, more importantly, what I want to do first is get all the, con most of the middle console out to prepare the carpet for removal. 
So, I am going to So what that means is what that means is actually taking those pieces and removing this entire column stack and that is the key to removing the whole dashboard up here along with the steering wheel the radio the glove box but it's important that you have to actually start from the back of the console and move your way forward so we're gonna tackle that next Gonna take my this out of here first to protect it. I'm gonna bring the tools in here just so they're accessible. Take the uh, cigarette holder out first, and I think the tabs are pretty much not secure, so it's going to be very easy to take this out. One, and I think this car was already taken apart before because, uh, yeah, there's nothing actually holding this in at all. So <laughs> I think uh, I'll actually be showing you how things get connected or get uh, installed properly, which will be the more important part. This is coming apart a lot easier than I had imagined. Because everything is actually uh, broken in this car. Let me sh give you a closer look. As you can see, down here there should be black brackets. You can probably see it better here. These screws, or this one, should be holding down this entire center console, but it's not, because somebody ripped it just like that. So, next task is to take this uh, piece off. This and this piece does come off uh, in in one go.
this will likely, uh, this bottom piece, I will likely install uh, be before I put in the carpets. Because what I was doing right now, I have to cut the carpet apart to get it out. But since I'm replacing the carpet, it doesn't really matter how I take things out. And I will have to fix up the, uh, the slack in the emergency brake handle as well. Well, a lot has been accomplished today, but I still have a little bit more time. I am going to take to start taking apart the front of this car. I'm going to start by taking out the OBD2 port, the radio, the HVAC controls, and these guys right here. Oh, yeah, shifter. Pop. That's actually quite new. Um, but I needed something to drive up to the cottage with. And, uh, yeah, so let's get that going and uh, see how far we get today. This is an aftermarket radio harness right here so basically I just need to slide one of these in here. Probably gonna have to take a look at this. I slide these two in there, and that should remove the radio. So let's just see how that goes. Oh, I seem to have a bit of a problem. I can't uh, get that out. So hopefully, if I start from the bottom again, and remove everything around it, it should, should come out. So let's start with the bottom here. With the OBD2 and this piece. So this one just pops out like this. And just take it out. Interesting side note, I do have another OBD2 uh, OEM, and I also have a one of the, um, what do you call it, aftermarket um, open interface OBD2 modules, which which I can program and have, have it listen to many other things in this car, but I'll talk more about that later. So I have actually another two of these at home. Okay. Take this out. And unplug the cigarette lighter. Some interesting aftermarket goodies in here. Oh, I seem to be, I seem to have hit a wall. These are a little too uh, wide to fit inside the side here to remove the radio harness. So I'm afraid we're going to have to continue on to something else. One of the things I thought would be interesting to show you guys is, um, well, I can't do the steering wheel either because I need to make sure the steering wheel is straight as well. So, I'm afraid her time is up. 
hopefully you enjoyed this video and uh, just like that hopefully you'll join me in the next video on the restoration of my dad's BMW. Take care guys, see you next time.